So today's topic is, is very current. It is musical theater singer and vocal health. So yeah, things are opening, people are getting cast, which is so exciting, and we're all super excited to go and be supportive audiences. But I wanna just address some specific things that musical theater performers have to deal with um, in the realm of vocal health. That is what I am most passionate about, is just keeping everybody healthy so that you're singing, you know, your wrinkled old people with no teeth and you're still cranking it out. Um, whatever that means to you as a performer. First, we're gonna go through some of the unique challenges that musical theater performers face in the area of vocal health, and then we're gonna talk about some strategies to help keep you healthy and strong from casting to closing. So the, the first thing we're gonna talk about is just the frequency of performances. Um, musical theater performers, when you're in a professional production, often you will have eight shows a week. You may only have one day off a week. You may be dark only on Mondays. In the very, very large productions on Broadway and the tours, they will have an understudy for you. But if you're doing a regional production, a non-union tour sometimes, putting in the understudy is a last resort. It's not something that's to be expected as part of the rotation. So there's, there's this underlying fear a lot of times around understudies that if you ask to have the night off that the management is maybe gonna see, think of you as being a weak or being a prima donna or what would happen if they put the understudy in and then maybe they like the understudy better than you. Maybe they'll, they'll replace you. These are real fears that people have. Um, so a lot of times people will end up going on and pushing through when maybe it's not in their best interest to do that. Maybe they're already really limping vocally. Maybe they're even sick. And singing sick is a, a really dangerous um, proposition for your vocal health. It's one of the quickest and easiest ways to hurt yourself vocally. Um, and there's, that's, there's a lot of work to still be done in that area of, of really normalizing an understudy situation and um, there's a reason why they're there, and we want to be able to self-protect and do what's right for the person so that they can continue to fulfill their contract instead of being afraid to call out. So that's, that's one consideration. So yeah, musical theater performers off the bat have to do more shows a week. Then if you're in a summer stock situation, like my student that I was telling you about, now that they have the first show up, they perform at night and then they rehearse the second show during the day. So they're rehearsing all day and then they're performing all night. So yeah, it, very rarely are you <laughs> expected to rehearse all day and then perform all night. In most other performance situations, that's um, not a sustainable long-term thing. And if you're doing summer stock, you have to do that all summer where you're going from show to show to show to show. And of course, again, you're grateful for the work and you don't wanna call out. So. A lot of times you're too tired and you're, you're pushing yourself too hard and, and then you start to get vocally tired and, and you still have to perform being vocally tired and then you're kind of in this like spiral, this vocal death spiral, which we don't like. Now turning to, uh, this is a little bit more on management, but this is, you know, I'm looking through a singer's eyes and I, I was a professional musical theater performer for quite a few years before I had kids. So this is something that I've seen firsthand. A lot of music directors are not first and foremost singers. A lot of them come from a piano or an instrumental orchestral background. Pianists are used to playing for many, many, many hours um, a day. And singers just can't do that. It's just not the same wear and tear. And if you ruin your instrument, you can't go buy another one. So a lot of times they really truly don't understand the limitations that we have as singers in our organic instrument. And so um, they don't understand that you have to market, that it, is, it literally takes more out of you to sing full out as opposed to backing off and playing lightly. Um, they Like that's something that's outside the realm of their experience. So you may have to ask permission to mark. Um, I usually advocate mark when you need to and then ask forgiveness instead of permission. If they're like, why are you marking? 
then you might have to have a conversation, a private conversation with the music director to um, help them understand what your um, boundaries are, what your healthy boundaries are. And it's, it is not normal to sing hard for two hours. It is, that is not something that is a reasonable expectation. Um, you should be able to back off. You know, every few, if you sing hard for five minutes, you should have a little, little downtime after that. It's not go again, go again, go again, go again, over and over again, uh, over and over and over again with the high, loud, intense singing. Um, so that's something that you, that need to be considered. Um, non-union shows don't have the same protections as union shows. Union shows, you are guaranteed breaks after a certain amount of time and they are non-negotiable. The, the theater has to, the management has to follow those union rules. If you are in a non-union production, they don't have the same guidelines. A lot of them will still offer union schedules for breaks. If they don't, um, you may have to advocate for yourself or again, ask, you know, talk to your music director on the side and just say, I understand we have these longer rehearsals. Um, let, can we work together to make sure that, you know, that we're maintaining our vocal health? And this again then gets into that scary land of you don't want to make a reputation for yourself of being somebody that's difficult to work with or um, is a prima donna. Um, these are basic um, self-care guidelines that are not unreasonable. So hopefully more and more the non-union um, houses will also be able to help help you advocate and feel safe advocating for yourself. So you rehearse, you open, yay, we're open. That wonderful rush of we just did this amazing thing, the audience loves us. And then what do you wanna do? You wanna go out after the show and you wanna you know, go out and eat. A lot of times you don't have a full meal before the performance. You wanna go out and celebrate your accomplishments. That can get you into trouble because um, a lot of times that, that emotional euphoric high, um, sometimes coupled with um, adult beverages in a loud environment, can really lead to beating your voice up in a very, very short amount of time. Plus, we all know that uh, alcoholic beverages can dehydrate you as well. So we wanna be super, super careful about that, especially tech week, because I don't know anybody that doesn't, um, by the time opening night gets to them, like they're tired. So you wanna really be careful and limit that um, celebration on opening night. Tech week, long hours. They, they do these things called 10 out of 12 where you have to be at the theater 10 out of 12 hours. That's a long day, friend. But you move into now this new environment. Theaters are always dusty. So you're on the stage, everybody's sneezing. It's like <clears throat> dust bunnies everywhere. It's just, it comes with the territory, right? Most theaters do not have air filtration the way it should be. Hopefully now post COVID they've changed that. That would be really, really cool, right? Um, and I, I have yet to hear from people to know if that is actually true or not, if they've upgraded the ventilation, but most theaters are older and so they, they just tend to be dusty. Um, talking about tours. So when you go on tour, there's lots of considerations that you have to take into account that can affect your vocal health. There's climate change. Um, if you're going f uh, from Florida to Utah, that's gonna be a little shock to your system because of the difference in humidity and um, temperature sometimes. Also, um, just like the altitude, will, it all will affect your um, mucous membranes and therefore your vocal health. Um, even sometimes if you're traveling overseas, you have to account for diet, whether or not the water is drinkable um, you know, just being able to maintain basic hydration is, is sometimes a challenge when you're on tour. The last little thing, and this isn't quite as big of a deal for musical theater. Once you get onto a stage, there's stage noise that you're singing over an orchestra. Um, and so that sometimes then we have a hard time being able to monitor the effort that we're putting out. So for some people, that's a struggle once you get to that situation. Because these are all things that do affect your vocal health if you're not mindful of it, to take steps to protect yourself. So those are all the, the unique challenges of um, musical theater performers in the area of vocal health. 
So now let's talk about strategies. And we're gonna get a little, we're, we're just gonna do a little overview right now. I'm not gonna get super, super specific in this particular live stream, um, other than to say, just be mindful of all of those things. And if you stick to these basic strategies, probably you're gonna be in, in pretty good shape you might need some help in specific areas, but this should help you. So number one, you're gonna monitor your hydration. I know we harp on you all the time. A well hydrated singer is going to be a healthier singer. If you are dehydrated, it is the quickest, easiest way to a vocal injury. So hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Uh, if you can, limit your after hours socializing. Um, try to be in places, if you have a choice, try to be in places that are not as noisy. Vocal rest when you can. During your very busiest times, like when during tech week, keep your mouth shut when you're not on stage. And so if you're doing summer stock, only speak when you're rehearsing during the day. And then only, you know, vocalize when you are performing at night and you'll, you'll have a better chance of making it through those very, very busiest times. Basically, shut up when you're not on stage. Um, mark it when you can. And you, you may have to advocate for yourself in that area um, because, again, the music director is not doing it with you full out every single time. So, and if they're not a singer, that may be something that they're not sensitive to. So don't be afraid to advocate for yourself. I always... Um, encourage you to have those conversations in private instead of in front of the entire um, cast because then it may be seen as um, rebellion or challenge. We don't want that, of course. We want to be very, very respectful. Um, once you move to the stage, this is something I'm actually super excited about is that masks have now been normalized. So when you're in a dusty environment, in an environment that is really irritating your mucous membranes, Put on a mask. These, um, the KN95s that you can get on Amazon, pretty cheap. They're not the medical 90, N95s, but they're they're still, they, they have a pretty robust filtration system and they work really well for dusty, pollen -y type environments. So if you're struggling with your allergies because all of a sudden you're in the middle of a cornfield in Kansas um, performing or Nebraska, or if you are, you know, in Utah and it's super, super dusty, wear a mask and um, that's been normalized now which is i think a very very welcome thing invest in a good steamer and i really really recommend invest in a good nebulizer nebulizers are going to really help with your your direct hydration within the vocal folds themselves steamers will help just kind of make sure your throat is moist but they're not actually penetrating into the tissues the nebulizer can keep the vocal folds themselves um, hydrated. So um, I really recommend, especially if you're on a tour, that you invest in a nebulizer. The one that I use and recommend is my uh, Vocal Mist, and I will drop an affiliate link in the chat um, so that you can, if you want to try it out and you want to invest in it, you can do that. Um, but that will make a huge difference for you. During Tech Week, it is extra important to hydrate however and whenever you can. And then the last thing is constantly monitor your effort. When we get excited, we usually amp up our, our effort. When we get in front of an orchestra, we usually ramp up our effort. And oftentimes we'll cross the threshold into trying too hard, and then that will get us into trouble, especially long term. So those are some guidelines. This is just an overview in this one particular field of specific challenges faced by musical theater performers and just some really, really brief techniques to help you stay healthy um, from casting to closing. If you're just joining me, and you're probably wondering who I am, I'm Crystal Barron. I am a vocal coach and vocal health professional, and I was a musical theater performer um, before I had children for many, many years and music director as well. And so I'm speaking um, from experience. I also experienced many, many vocal injuries um, throughout my career, which is part of my story and why I'm such an advocate for vocal health. And that's what I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for joining me and hope to see you guys soon. Bye.